While it may not be the most important hardware component in a gaming PC, a good CPU is still paramount if you want everything to run smoothly. Now we talked about CPUs a lot already, so if you want to know more about their technical side, then check out some of the videos linked in the description. So instead of doing a grand intro, let's dive right into the thick of things with our list of the 8 best gaming CPUs 2019 has to offer. First up, we have two excellent budget solutions to showcase, one from Intel and one from Ryzen. These may not be the cheapest CPUs you can get, but they're as affordable as it gets without seriously compromising the gaming experience. So if you want a reasonably priced CPU that'll be good for the foreseeable future and won't bottleneck your GPU, then feast your eyes upon these. First up, we have the Intel Core i3-8100. It's the first 8th gen i3 CPU by Intel and as you may know, the 8th gen is the one where Intel really had to step up their game thanks to AMD finally providing some good competition in the form of their Ryzen CPUs. Overall, the i3-8100 is an excellent budget CPU with 4 physical cores and a high base clock speed. Like all Intel Core CPUs, it does come with integrated graphics, but these graphics hardly offer any gaming value whatsoever, so they shouldn't even be an afterthought when deciding whether to opt for Intel or AMD. Its overclocking potential can also be entirely disregarded as it can only be overclocked via BCLK when used with some relatively expensive motherboards, which you shouldn't be buying in the first place if you're going to buy a budget CPU. What's a bit cooler though is the fact that the i3-8100 comes with Intel Optane support that can enhance system performance thanks to small caching SSDs. This was a way bigger deal when the CPU only came out and SSDs weren't nearly as affordable as they are now, but it's still something that can come in handy if if you're building a budget gaming PC. It may look like we're disregarding all the extra features, and we are, but honestly the bare bones experience that you get with the i3-8100 is enough to make it worth your consideration. Still, if you're looking for the most cost-effective budget CPU, then you should turn your attention towards the AMD Ryzen 3 2200G. On paper, this CPU and the previous one don't appear all that different. They're both 14 nanometer quad-core CPUs with integrated graphics and similar clock speeds, but there are three things that distinguish the 2100G as the more appealing option. Firstly, there are the Vega 8 integrated graphics that are in a completely different league than the ones found in the i3-8100. On average, Vega 8 outperforms the competition by an actual 100%, and it can actually handle 720p gaming exceptionally well. Not that you should rely on integrated graphics for a gaming PC in the first place, unless you're really on a tight budget. But at the very least, it's a reliable backup that you'll always be able to count on. Secondly, the 2200G CPU is unlocked, so you can overclock it with pretty much any AMD chipset. Now, granted, it's not like the CPU has an insane overclocking potential or anything like that, mostly due to the stock cooler having a relatively small heatsink, but it's still a cool feature that can breathe some extra life into your PC. And thirdly, it's cheaper. The fact that the Ryzen 5 2200G does so many things better than the i3-8100 while still being a good $20 cheaper is actually mind-boggling. So if we had to recommend one of these CPUs over the other, we'd definitely go with the Ryzen. Still, while there is a lot to love in these two budget solutions, you'll probably want something more powerful if you're a hardcore gamer. This is where the mid-range CPUs come into play. And the best thing is, when it comes to gaming PCs, a good mid-range CPU is actually good enough not to slow down even the most powerful GPUs, making them the ideal solution for most people. Again, we'll be featuring two models, one from Intel and one from AMD. And starting off with a bang, we'll give you the Intel Core i5 9600K. This 9th gen Intel CPU is one of the most powerful mid-range gaming solutions ever, thanks to an incredible single core performance that is unmatched in this price range. On paper, it may not look that much better than the previous i3-8100, what with the same 14 nanometer lithography, and only slightly faster base clock speed, and just two more cores without hyper-threading. But on paper specifications can be and are deceiving, and the i5-9600 
3600K definitely has a lot going for it. Most importantly, it is an unlocked CPU, meaning that you can overclock it with any chipset that supports this feature. To which extent you'll be able to do so, however, will depend largely on the cooler you buy. And you will need to buy one separately because, like all of Intel's unlocked CPUs, the i5 9600K doesn't come with a stock cooler of any kind. The potential is definitely there and it is impressive, but this also makes it one of the less cost-effective mid-range CPUs. Additionally, it's not as good at multitasking as most of Ryzen's models in this price range, but this largely boils down to the lack of hyper-threading. Still, if you need a CPU that's specifically for gaming, then this shouldn't be an issue as a single core performance is much more important when it comes to gaming than multitasking. And as far as single core performance is concerned, there are no mid-range CPUs that can go head-to-head -head with the i5-9600K. Now that was an impressive mid-range CPU if we've ever seen one, but is it the best? To answer that, we'll have to see how the AMD Ryzen 5 2600K stacks up. And at first glance, it looks to outperform the i5-9600K quite handily. Sure, its base clock speed is lower by a hair, but it's got twice as many logical cores and a 12 nanometer lithography. It doesn't come with any sort of integrated graphics, but if you're looking to buy the best mid-range gaming CPU, then you're way past integrated graphics anyway. What it does have, however, is a stock cooler better than most and great overclocking potential, and all of this at a lower price. So while we may trigger a lot of Intel fans here, we have to go with AMD on this one as well. It's far from a decisive victory, but there's no denying that it's the more cost-effective solution of the two. Sure, its single core performance is a bit worse, but the margin between them isn't big enough to make much of a difference. And then we have the high-end CPUs, the big guns, the most powerful and the most expensive solutions out there. Technically, we could divide the following four CPUs into two tiers, high-end and ludicrous, but since you won't need anything more powerful than the mid-range solutions, even if you're running an RTX 2080 Ti, we've decided to bunch them all together, if only to underpin the idea that high-end is too high-end for gaming when it comes to CPUs. Still, if you plan on running some professional software in addition to video games, or you plan on running multiple GPUs at once, then these are the CPUs you should look towards. A good way to describe the i7-9700K would be to say that it's like the i5-9600K on steroids. It excels at the same things, but to a greater extent. So you can expect an absurdly powerful single-core performance and an overclocking potential that's sure to leave no gamer wanting. But by the same token, it shares many of the i5-9600K's negative features. Most notably, while it does bump the core count to 8, there's still no hyper-threading which is a bit of a bummer considering the price. Still, if you need a high-end CPU specifically for gaming, then this is your best option, as the 8 cores are more than enough and the single core performance is just phenomenal. And the same thing goes for the high-end AMD solution, the Ryzen 7 2700X. Just like the Ryzen 5 2600X, this one is a 12 nanometer CPU that focuses on multi-core performance, thanks to its incredible 8 cores and 16 threads. It comes with the magnificent Wraith Prism RGB cooler, but its overclocking potential potential is still a bit lacking compared to the previous Intel CPU. Unsurprisingly, it also costs less than its Intel-made rival. And while it may appear that AMD is again offering more for less money, it's important to keep in mind that anyone looking to buy a high-end CPU is also probably looking for some serious jaw-dropping performance. And while the Ryzen 7 2700X is no slouch, it does have a slightly more limited overclocking potential. There actually is an Intel Core processor that features features 8 hyper-threaded cores, but you'd have to enter the real heavyweight category for that, as the processor we're talking about is the i9-9900K. Now this beast of a CPU can actually handle multitasking better than any mainstream second-gen Ryzen CPU can, all the while retaining the amazing single-core performance that Intel is known for. But the asking price is too high and the specs too much of an overkill for this to even be necessary for gaming. Still, it's not the biggest overkill in this video, as that honor has to go to the Ryzen Threadripper 
X. This 12 core, 24 thread monstrosity of a CPU is one of the best CPUs for multitasking you could get. It's bad for gaming, of course. Not in the sense that it couldn't keep up with you or whatever you decide to throw at it, but simply because, like the i9-9900K, it's just too overqualified for gaming. Plus, unlike all the mainstream Ryzen CPUs, it uses a special tier 4 socket which limits your choice of motherboards and hampers upgradability. So why are we even showcasing CPUs like these? These last two. Well, we wanted to illustrate just how unnecessary high-end CPUs are for gaming. Sure, the last two examples were glaringly too powerful, but the first two are genuinely overpowered as well. It's best to draw the line at mid-range. Now all that's left to do is to decide which of these CPUs is the right fit for you. And once you decide on the price range, this basically boils down to age-old debate of Intel versus AMD. We've made a whole video where we discuss only this topic, so do check it out if you want to know more. The link's in the description. But for now, here are the basics. There are really only two things to consider when deciding between these two companies, the performance and the price. Performance-wise, it's important to keep in mind that single-core performance is the most important kind for gaming. And as we've stated numerous times already, Intel processors generally have AMD beat rather handily in this regard. As such, Intel CPUs do outperform their AMD counterparts across the board. There's simply no denying this. However, the thing that we'd like to emphasize is that this difference in performance is by no means astronomical and should never amount to more than 5 FPS. So if you're setting your sights exclusively on gaming, then going with Intel will will ensure that you're getting the most out of every penny you spend. But the difference here is marginal. And while the best multi-core performance that AMD offers isn't as important for gaming, we have to remember that this isn't the only thing that an AMD CPU brings to the table. Certain models with integrated graphics like the Ryzen 3 2200G are phenomenal and can hold their own for gaming exceptionally well if you're building a PC on a budget of around $300, all the while leaving you with an excellent upgrade path. And then there's the price. Intel CPUs may have slightly better single core performance, but it's undeniable that AMD CPUs are more cost effective, as they're not only cheaper but also come with better stock coolers. All in all, while Intel may have been the only company to turn to for gaming CPUs a couple of years ago, the situation has changed drastically since the release of the Ryzen line of CPUs. So both Intel and AMD CPUs are equally good options right now. And that about does it for this video. The bottom line is is both AMD and Intel are perfectly viable, but AMD does offer better value if you're on a budget. At least that's the way that we see it. We'd love to hear what you guys have to say, so feel free to agree or disagree down in the comments. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. And again, if you'd like a more in-depth discussion on how Intel and AMD stack up against each other, check out the link in the description. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.